Hey friends, welcome to my YouTube channel MCB Chem Tube. And you get my previous video from my website or from my YouTube channel. So we were discussing some topic in organic chemistry, uh, halogen compound. Halogen. This is my second lecture on this particular topic, and in this second lecture, I will be talking to you about. Schwartz reaction of Engelstein reaction, allylic halogenation, and preparation of aryl halides. And the, all these are related to preparation of halides. So let us consider first Schwartz and Engelstein reaction. And usually, general halide reaction is not applicable in the case of fluorination and iodination of alkyl or aryl halide. Iodination problem with iodination is it is irreversible. In fluorination is explosive in nature. So halide exchange reaction can be done by using metallic halide. Schwartz is a reaction for fluorination and Fingelstein is for iodination. In Schwartz reaction and preparation of alkyl fluoride from halo alkyl and halide exchange, it is an halide exchange reaction using metallic fluoride like uh, antimony trifluoride and silver fluoride and cobalt Fluoride. And this is a general scheme. You have a substrate alkyl halide <coughs> reacted with the metallic fluorides, and this fluoride F minus is a nucleophilic, and this carbon is positively charged and electrophilic center. This bond break, and you get fluoride, corresponding fluoride. And there is a formation of byproduct silver halide, and this silver halide has very good rolling, making this product available. Now usually, silver halide, a silver chloride, whether it is silver bromide, it is a precipitate that that precipitate formed can be removed, and hence that is the reason for for the forward reaction. And by Le Chatelier principle, you get the forward reaction feasible. And in this particular reaction, you cannot use sodium chloride or potassium chloride because uh, byproduct will be sodium chloride or sodium iodide, and these two byproducts are soluble in water. And another important point is it is an SN2 reaction, substitution of pleophilic bimolecular. Example for Schwartz reaction is uh, sulfur chloride can be converted into fluoride by using silver fluoride. Next to Fingelstein. And <clears throat> this is iodination method. Get prepared iodine from haloalkane and it's an allied exchange reaction using metallic iodide. Here we are using sodium iodide or potassium iodide. It's also a central reaction. And this is the same mechanism happens here. Here one important point is here you are using dry acetone. So dry acetone has very good role in making this reaction possible. Because the byproduct sodium halide, that is sodium chloride or sodium bromide, that is insoluble in acetone. So you get a precipitate here again. And at the same time, sodium iodide or potassium iodide is soluble in acetone. So here, the different solubility of sodium halide uh, you make it form precipitate and equilibrium shifted to the right. Example for finger stream reaction. This is an example. First one, two chlorobutane. You can convert to corresponding iodide. You can see that this configuration of this carbon has been changed. This chlorine is in uh, dashed stage, and this one is wedged. You can see that this inversion of configuration due to SN2 substitution of pleophilic reaction. SN2 is a there is a possibility of inversion and bond that is called a Walden inversion. And this is due to backside attack of uh, nucleophile. Second example, you have two halide here, bromide and chloride. But here substitution only occurs at uh, chloride. What is the reason? Because this lone pair on bromine are in resonance with the uh, benzene. So this bond is strong. You cannot replace it very easily. Whereas this chloride, this is easy to replace. And this is another example. And next topic is uh, of allylic halogenation. So what is mean by allylic carbon? Uh, this is a carbon adjacent to C, C, double, C double bond C. 
So this position is called allylic position. And allylic hydrogen means the carbon on that allylic uh, carbon, uh, the hydrogen on allylic carbon that is called allylic hydrogen. And this is the uh, term, uh, you know, bond dissociation and therapy of uh, hydrogen, where is hydrogen in allylic uh, compound. Here, this one is allylic hydrogen. And this is having less energy when compared to vinylic hydrogen. So allylic CH bond is weak. Usually, you can do allylic halogenation <coughs> by treating allylic halide with bromine. But at room temperature, there is a possibility of uh, you know, the breaking of this double bond, then halogenated. But at a high temperature, there is a different mechanism occurs, radical mechanism occurs, and this allylic carbon get brominated. Allylic substitution reaction occurs. And here at uh, high temperature, this bond can be easily break, and you get ex an excess of concentration of PR radical at a high temperature. So you can do allylic halogenation by using this method. method that is treating bromine at a high temperature. So this is the not a good method because you need to use very high temperature here. So what is the alternative method for that? So there is a laboratory method that means that can be done in laboratory very easily without any difficulties. Uh, so commercial method was making commercial compound you can uh, one possibility should be reaction should be at room temperature so for that purpose nbs can be used nbs means it is an n bromosuccinamide so what is the structure of nbs this is the structure of nbs so cyclohexene you can allylic halogenate by using n bromosuccinamide in presence of heat either heat or light or peroxide they are radical initiators all this and this allylic carbon this carbon get brominated and you can see that this bromine this hydrogen get replaced by this bromine and hydrogen comes here and byproduct is succinamide so what is the mechanism of this allylic halogenation and what this is an you know photochemical reaction and first in first step what happens is NBS get homolytically cleaved so NBS home on homolytic cleavage you get a BR radical and corresponding succinamide radical also and what do this BR radical this BR radical react with this hydrogen here and you get HBr and corresponding radical of this compound cyclohexene. So you get HBr. HBr, this HBr react with NBS again. So with NBS again, what you get is you get a brom brom in Br2, Br2, and Br2. How you are getting Br2? From this bromine and from this bromine, these two combine to give Br2, and you get succinamide also. And this Br2 react with this radical. That is the third step with this radical, and it form our final product, allylic halogenated product. So here, when you have an excess of Br2, that problem with excess of br2 it can uh, react with a double bond so you need only very low concentration of br2 so that role is provided by nbs usually in nbs you get hbr and br2 at very low concentration so you get allylic halogenated product and this allylic halogenation uh, allylic radical it is highly stable radical this can be this one this one is a highly stable one 
this can be resonance stabilized okay so it is a very stable compound okay the, and finally you get a br radical and this can again propagate the reaction this is a, this can again so it is a chain reaction occurs okay then one question Account for the fact that allylic bromination of one of the octene by NPS give two products. Why you are getting two products here? Okay, so let's consider the reason. Here on uh, allogenation, first you get a radical here. This radical can be stabilized and form. First it forms secondary radical and, and it rear resonance stabilized form, form primary radical and bromine either can react with this secondary radical or this primary radical so you get a mixture of product and which is stable one highly substituted product will be stable this is highly substituted because it has an one al uh, alkyl substituent here another alkyl here here only one alkyl substance are there so this is an another example you can see here the allylic position get prominated and you have to write down the product of this reaction and you propose a mechanism for this second question also and third one third method preparation of alkyl halide you can prepare alkyl halide from direct halogenation direct halogenation is possible by using FeCl3 FeBr3 or AlCl3 but uh, you can see here lch 3 can be used you get in, because here you have a, a ch3 here you get ortho para product and this is actually nuclear halogenation and uh, you can do uh, chlorination and bromination by using fecl3 and fbr3 but for iodination actually uh, you cannot do this same reaction because HI, the product formed HI here. One problem with HI is HI is a very good reducing agent. So it's a strong reducing agent. So it reversible reaction occurs. So usually adenation occurs uh, do in the presence of very strong oxidizing agent. And you can also prepare a aryl halide from disonium chloride. This is a sand mesh reaction. It is used to synthesize aryl halide from aryl disonium chloride using, that is important, copper salt or as a reagent or catalyst. That is this one. First two reaction is a sand mesh reaction from benzene disonium salt by using copper salt, copper bromide or uh, chloride, you get corresponding chloride and chromine by the elimination of sodium. It's a sand mesh reaction. And this is the iodination, you have to use another reagent and fluorination, you have to use another reagent. And this fluorination reaction is known as Schumann reaction or Bowles Schumann reaction uh, is used for making fluorobenzene. And second reaction for preparation of aryl halide is uh, Gatterman reaction. And the only the difference, the difference between the Sandmes and Gatterman is the the choose of the catalyst here you are using copper only copper powder in previous case you are using copper salt and gatterman is a halogenase can be prepared by the reaction of benzene diazonium chloride with copper powder that's important you should remember that in presence of corresponding halogen acid okay uh, in sand maze you are using copper salt and halogen acid Okay, that's all about uh, preparation of aryl halide and all this reaction today we discussed uh, the preparation method. So we finished this preparation of halides. Now, next presentation we will move to uh, SN1 and SN2 reaction. That's all. Thank you for watching my video.